Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates. So let's start with Samson Dauda and his back update. His back has improved significantly. Take a look at the density, at the thickness, at the improvements that Samson Dauda made in his back. This back looks significantly improved and there is definitely a lot more room to grow it. So genetically, structure-wise, he has a good back. He has the width, he has the thickness, he just needs to work on it a little bit more. But as you can see, look at this, look at it here. So as you can see, as soon as he started seriously working on his offseason with his coach Milos Sharchev, he improved, he grew so much. Milos said in a podcast that Samson wants to pull a Ronnie which obviously means that he wants to come in much, much better than he was ever before. He wants to improve so much that he pretty much smokes everybody on that stage and wins the Mr. Olympia. Is that gonna happen? Probably not. As you can see here when he does the back relaxed pose, you can still see that his back needs more improvement. And he can improve it to a point where he can win shows, not just win shows, he already won shows, but like be one of the top five Olympians. I can see him being one of the best in the world, but it's gonna take him a little bit more than just a half of the offseason. You know, he competed at the Arnold, and even though Mr. Olympia is in December, so he has about eight months, that is a lot. That is a lot of time. It's not that little, but it's still not a full off season. It would be a good thing if he actually took a year off of everything and just worked on bringing the size up. He would be one of the top bodybuilders in the world. But this way, whatever he did with Milos, I'm sure he did a lot of carbs, a lot of insulin, probably not much more gear than he ever used, but you know, a lot more insulin and probably a lot more food. Take a look at his back shot at the Arnold Classic this year where he took fourth. So as you can see, his back has an amazing shape. Overall, his entire physique is really beautiful, really classic. His symmetry is insane. And I'm not just talking about the symmetry on you know, legs compared to his upper body and that kind of symmetry, but I'm talking about two opposite sides looking exactly alike. So this is a crazy level of symmetry. Look at the back. Both sides look like a mirror reflection. His bone structure is also pretty amazing. This guy is actually 5 foot 11, even though he seems 6 foot 2. So he's not exactly super tall, but he seems very tall because of that structure. So he basically has all the tools to be to Mr. Olympia in a couple of years. If he really puts in the work, and if he actually does what Milos said that he wants to do, if he pulls a Ronnie, if he comes in bigger than ever, who can stop this guy, really? He can be a really big threat to the Mr. Olympia. And it looks like he is working really hard. The back looks really improved. Even though it was a weak point, now it looks really thick. And overall, he just grew so much. So watch out for Samson Dauer. I think he's going to make a big impact at the Mr. Olympia this year. If you guys are looking for a good multivitamin, multimineral, I will suggest to you Vintage Base. It is a combination of so many great vitamins and minerals, but also with an addition of probiotic. So guys, if you want to support my channel as well, you can try this product out by clicking the link down below and using the code even for a 12% discount. Alright, next we have a physique update of Brad Wilkin and also Charles Griffin who competed recently and as you can see he is very lean right now and Brad he's in his off season but he also looks really impressive and he looks bigger than Charles Griffin. Now I really like what Brad Wilkin did this year, it is connected to what I was telling you about Samson. So you guys probably know that Matt Jensen is coaching Brett Wilkin and they made a lot of good decisions. So before Brett Wilkin's breakout show, Chicago Pro, when he lost against Hunter Labrada but placed in a very strong second, he beat Rolly Winkler and some other really good bodybuilders, he looked really impressive. Before that, he was doing a really long offseason with Matt Jensen. Then after that, they decided to do the Arnold. So in the meantime, they made progress, Brett grew. But he didn't peak properly and he realized he still needs to add more mass if he wants to be really competitive against the other guys, if he wants to be like the top Olympian. I mean, I understand the bodybuilders, they want to compete more often because it helps their social media, it helps them promote themselves, but if they want to make serious progress, they need longer off seasons, like Brett is doing. So as you can see right here, Brett is looking pretty huge and his conditioning is not looking bad. Compared to Charles Griffin, who basically just stepped off the stage, who is pretty much show-ready, right? Brad is holding his own, actually. 
I would say that he needs to get a little bit more chubby if he really wants to grow, but he is definitely growing. Like, he looks like a freaking mass monster right now. And I don't think he plans on prepping anytime soon. If you guys know what his plans are, tell me in the comment section down below. But I don't think he has any plans for this year. So the next time he steps on stage, he is going to be significantly improved. And if they miss the peak again, they're gonna get it right for sure, for one show at least. And Matt Jensen, he peaks these guys almost every single time. He rarely ever misses, almost never. He unfortunately did miss a little bit with Brett. I don't think he just uh, didn't peak him properly. I think Brett was just not super conditioned, not conditioned enough for that Arnold Classic. Maybe it's not Matt Jensen's fault, who knows what happened, but basically we can all be sure that the next time Brett Wilkins steps on stage, he is going to hurt some people's feelings, he's going to win some shows for sure. But as far as Charles Griffin, he is doing the Olympia this year, and I think this guy pretty much maxed out his physique. Here is the most recent physique update of Charles Griffin. Just take a look at this. What the hell is going on here? I mean, the fullness, the roundness of this guy is unmatched. Who has this kind of fullness in the IFBB right now? Not many people. He might be the best in that regard. The fullness of his chest, of his arms, and especially of his back. His back is absolutely ridiculous. You don't really see it here, but, you know, this guy is really full, really round, but what he is lacking is structure. Just compare this to Samson Dauda. No matter how much muscle Charles Griffin puts on his frame, he's never gonna be better than Samson, for example. And uh, his conditioning, his fullness, roundness, all those things can only help him so much. Can help him to get to a certain point. And I think he got to the highest point he'll ever get. You know, he turned pro and he's a good pro. He wins pro shows. But at the Mr. Olympia, I don't see him cracking the top 10. No way. I mean, he is really impressive, he is really conditioned, he is really hard and everything like that, he's really full and round and he's going to probably edge out some people who don't uh, show up at their 100% and I'm pretty sure Charles will be at his absolute best but even if some of the guys don't show up at their best, they're going to beat him because of the structure, he doesn't have the best structure, that's for sure, uh, he did what he could, so he added as much muscle as he possibly could have, and he learned how to do a vacuum even, he improved his legs too, uh, he made his waist look smaller than it actually is, and it's a pretty wide waist, so he improved his physique I think to the maximum, maybe there is a tiny bit more room to progress, but not a lot more really, not a lot, so I don't really see this guy cracking the top 10 at the Mr. Olympia, but, you know, winning shows, competing at the Mr. Olympia, being one of the top 20 pros in the world is an enormous success, so that's good enough for sure, I take that. Will this guy, Keon Pearson, live up to his hype? Will he ever, you know, be the Mr. Olympia in 2012? Possibly, probably someday. Is he gonna win Tampa this year? I think he will, I think he will pretty much easily. I don't think there are any heavy hitters in that show. In my past video about Keon, I noticed that he wasn't looking super sharp, especially in the glutes in his lower back at three and a half weeks out, but as you can see, and as he says in the caption, the changes, the changes are really fast at this point. So from that physique update to this one, he definitely lost a lot of body fat. As you can see, he looks much, much harder. His conditioning has significantly improved. His chest looks really hard, really separated. His shoulders as well, you can see vascularity everywhere. So it looks like this guy is going to bring a solid conditioning. He's coached by Patrick Tour, and it looks like Patrick knows what he's doing. And I don't want to see Keon only bring it for Tampa. I want to see him bring it also for the Mr. Olympia. I want to see him bring it even more for the Mr. Olympia. It would be completely okay if he was a little bit off for Tampa if that means he's going to be more fresh and more willing to suffer for the Mr. Olympia where he can bring his absolute best package. I honestly hope something like that is the plan. I hope he's going to bring... Uh, of course, very good conditioning for Tampa, but he's going to bring even better conditioning and better overall package at the Mr. Olympia. And if he does that, I can definitely see him cracking the top five. As far as winning the Mr. Olympia, 
you know, there are guys like Derek Lansford, like Sean Clarida, like Kamal Gargney, all these guys are really good, like they are really matured, they have a lot of muscle on their frames, they are really conditioned, and I don't know about Derek, Derek is probably gonna move on, but you know, as far as him beating somebody like Sean Clarida or Kamal Gargney, I don't see that this year, but in a couple of years, I can definitely see that. Three weeks out of Tampa, we have another update of the potential, most likely the winner of the Open division at this show, Quinton Area. Take a look at him right here. At three weeks out, he looks in really good condition. Head to toe, he shows us everything. He's very transparent in his physique updates. You can see his glutes, you can see his hamstring squats, everything basically. And he looks spot on for three weeks out. He's going to peak just when he needs to peak. In three weeks, he's going to be perfectly ready, and I can definitely see this guy winning Tampa. But as far as winning Texas against Steve Kuklo, that's gonna be more of a challenge. Can Quinton, this young guy, do that? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think not this year. But I can see this guy has so much potential that I would say this guy has a Mr. Olympia winning potential. We also have a physique update of Rafael Brandao. This is him right now. As you can see, he's growing in his offseason for sure. He looks bigger. Now, how much muscle can he actually gain between shows? I don't know, but he's working on it. As you can see, he is eating. He definitely gained some body fat. He definitely added some water weight, as he should. It is the offseason. You can see it especially in his back. And you can also see that he is growing. He is really big right now. As a matter of fact, he's actually 285 right now, and that is heavy, that is a lot of weight. And this guy is known for being a classy guy. Some of them are suggesting that he should downsize and just do the classic because he has the classic look and he will never be as big as these monsters in the open. But honestly, I would say this guy is everything that is right about the bodybuilding. Of course, he is not just as big as he needs to be, but he has such an amazing physique, such crazy proportions, lines, symmetry, everything, everything. He needs a little bit more tissue to the right places. He must be really careful about not adding any more size to his waist, and if he actually manages to add more size to everywhere else, aside from the waistline, he has the genetic structure to be one of the best in the world. And with this beautiful, classic kind of look, I would love to see that happen. He is growing, as I said, he's 285, so he's definitely putting on the tissue, and I'm really happy that he is doing that. I'm really happy that he is devoted to the cause, and that he's actually gonna make some progress in this offseason, before the Mr. Olympia, because he is qualified. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave your comments down below. Subscribe also for more videos like this. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. All the best and bye-bye.